university also arrange field trips for you. For those who do not want to have car or do not want to rent a car, you could go to pretty much many places, Universal Studio, Disneyland, San Diego Zoo, all of those are optional. The campus has a very good supportive system for student services in general. Uh, the recreation center, which is a gym for us, it's arranged trip to San Francisco, trip to Grand Canyon, for example, is a very cheap price. Meaning, go to Grand Canyon for two nights, or three nights might cost you a little bit over a hundred dollars to go in with everything included. So when it's arranged by the campus, I'm comfortable because I know the bus will go in safe, everything will be secure, everything will be insured. That's what I like. So if you don't want to travel yourself, you look into two, two things. You look into uh, the trip that someone will arrange for you, this is optional trip, and you look for the trip from recreation center. <coughs> so affordable, it's public university. Those trips are not to make money, actually to lose money for the university because the state actually subsidized half of the trip. You can't go for San Francisco for $120 for three days. I mean, the, the, bus, the bus or the car itself would not cost you uh, as cheap as that, but the university actually chip in for all of those transportation. So as you come in, if you want to go through this, this is the trip that uh, someone will arrange, and you need to sign up by uh, April 15. Someone will remind you as well as, as you come up on campus. I believe in repetition a little bit, especially for us. <coughs> I, I think having this information a few times will be will be helpful for you, but you'll be, you'll be reminded of that. So these are important information. Student ID will be given to you. You will be uh, using student ID for a lot of things. You can, once again, use it for uh, transportation, which is free. You show the student ID into the bus, then you pretty much can go places. Uh, there will be, someone will email you uh, information about internet connection. I was gonna give it to you today, but what is the point? You know, you have about uh, over a week uh, to forget about it. So before you arrive, you have that on hand and you actually, to get Wi-Fi, to get internet connection, you have to have a, stu a student ID, so someone will actually give that to you. Uh, transportation and parking, I'll talk to you about that as well, and your immigration status. And attendance policy, which is critical. The attendance, attendance policy is critical because of a few things. Because uh, immigration compliance, you must, you must, once again, you can get in trouble with uh, traffic ticket, I would not be as worried as you would get in trouble with immigration. Because trust me, you will be working with somebody from the US, you will be coming back to the US to do business, and you don't want to jeopardize that. <coughs> so the attendance policy goes like this. You can miss classes, you, you could, and, and you, know, I, you are adult, and I can't really tell you to be in every class. You can manage your absence if you want to. But if you exceed 20 hours of absences, then you will not be receiving certificates. And it's heartbroken for me, I have to say. Last year we have three students that did not receive it. It's heartbroken because it was a big group of uh, students coming in. Everyone but three walked up to the state, received the program, received the certificate. And the three, as much as I wanted to give, I can't. You know, as, as much as negotiation going on, I can't. So make a very good intention that you attend classes because, you know, we need to report your uh, absences and your attendance <coughs> to MIT as well. I don't know how that information will be used, but for our university, it is a policy that if you miss past certain number of classes, you will not be receiving certificate. If you miss it early on, meaning that uh, the first month, you already have uh, way too many absences, then you then not meeting the full-time uh, uh, visa requirement status. At that time, the deportation might actually happen. I have, I have not de deported anyone. I mean, the university might that I can deport anyone. The university has not deported anyone. But we also wanted to make sure that that doesn't happen. And this it wasn't for attendance reason that we deported. There was one case a few years ago. There was some deportation or dismissal uh, was related to harassment concern. And that is the part that I wanted to make sure we left that we don't do that as well. You know, there was uh, a filing from other student on the campus 
that uh, that one of the students uh, perform certain thing that that considered as a harassment. Immediately, the campus police come in. Immediately, uh, all investigation going on and deportation was part of the process. The program ended earlier, so uh, we did. I mean, the file was for deportation, but the student actually left the country before that action happened. Critical, 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 because the law is so serious. It is so serious that that you don't even want to get that. And sometimes, you know, it's it's. It's kind of it's kind of sad though to be American because everything's so protected, so overly protected. In some culture, it might be okay to say, "Oh, you look beautiful today. You have a beautiful dress, beautiful hair." In the U.S., on the one hand, that kind of compliment can be deemed harassment. It's interesting. It's it, it's beyond interesting. I can't really cover that for us today, but there will be an expert, that's an office in, in, in our uh, university, in actually, not in our university, in the US in general. That is a law called Title IX. It's a zero tolerance for any form of harassment. Let's say we both are friends, and I make joke with my friends about certain things. You happen to walk past by our joke, and it ha actually happened to make you feel uncomfortable about it. You can actually file a complaint and we both will get into trouble. Those are something way beyond. And I, the expert, will come in and talk to you about that. And that's why I don't want anyone to 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 get into trouble for that. I know you have some questions. Yeah. Uh, I just want to make it very clear: twelve, twenty hours is the total. It's not it's a total. It's not per subject. Remember that. Yes. All right. Remember, it is not per subject. It is total twenty hours. Right? And the trips, they are being included in it. Someone who called to mention, if it is 10 minutes, 15 minutes, three times, you know, everything is mentioned there. Right? The category of e absentism. He, what? Please, please. The Sorry. being late in class causes a lot of problems for, for your friends, that's for sure, you know. Majority of us are really good, very responsible, and that's from my experience. And I know this group will be the same thing. Majority will be really good, but then there will be some exception to that majority. It's first to interrupt those who are actually doing well, being responsible, and it also will interrupt the instructor. You know, when they have two or three hours with you, it is packed. You know, today I'm not a very good example to be late. Actually, I wasn't late. I was at the campus at 8.30. Uh, but apparently I went to the wrong place. But in the U.S., if it's eight o'clock, it is eight o'clock. That is no one minute delay. There's no one minute delay. So when eight o'clock starts, everything pop and then it go. Time is so critical. So professor get upset when that doesn't go the way they train. You know, it's a culture thing, and they train that way. So we don't wanna. We don't wanna. We need to adjust to the culture, and I think that's the beautiful part about going overseas, because you get to see a different way. And, and now you understand, the, the way that you adjust it, it helps you to understand American culture, and when you do business with American, perhaps you can understand them a little bit better on why people behave certain ways. So this is a wonderful experience that you should have. So attendance, once again, is number one concern. Uh, we check. This one is a little bit uh, different, and I, I think we, we have had a few problems. Sometimes this policy <coughs> happened because there were some problems in the past and we tried to address it. So we check attendance early in class. There'll be somebody, someone will rem remember you by name, seriously. <laughs> she would remember you by name, and she would know exactly where you are. She's so good. Uh, so we check attendance when you first arrive uh, the classroom. We also check at the it does seem a little bit uh, crazy, but you know we have immigration to fulfill, uh, uh, obligation to fulfill. So try not to be like in class, uh, cell phone. It's not preferred. I, I think professor will let you know. Uh, I, I think this is my view though. I think there are some time we have emergency, we have uh, something that we need to look on our phone. But some people do abuse that because it's excessively on the phone all the time and not paying, <coughs> not paying attention to the professor, that, that's maybe too extreme. 
but once again, professor will uh, make sure that uh, they will tell you the, the, how the class should be conducted. Okay. Here are something that uh, you don't want to be in trouble. Because when you are in trouble, police is there. We are the second safety campus I told you. On campus, there are a lot of emergency emergency uh, contact. So basically, there's a little blue hole that's going up every maybe 400 feet or so. And when somebody touch anything, within 40 seconds, police will be at that destination, at that at that location. So anything that you do, it may seem like it is my it is my business, but if it impacts somebody else, they might do that kind of report. The dorm is really good dorm. And, and I think uh, once again, it's it's more of the safety. You know, the camp, the police work really well on campus. Uh, no drug. If you're younger than uh, 21 years old, you should not be drinking in the U.S. any place anywhere. Uh, if you are older than 21, then you know, on campus is not allowed at the dorm. So the dorm is a dry uh, area, meaning that you cannot drink. When you rent a car, make sure you have insurance. You can actually buy insurance from the from the car rental. They're not expensive, actually, uh, just to be safe. You know, uh, the most expensive for you is tickets. So don't get tickets because that perhaps will cost three times the time that you rent a car. Uh, 